Ecclesiastes chapter 6. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, and it is prevalent among men. A man to whom God gives riches and wealth and honor, so that his soul lacks nothing of all that he desires. Yet God does not empower him to eat from them, for a foreigner eats from them. This is vanity and a sickening evil. If a man becomes the father of one hundred children and lives many years, however many the days of his years may be, but his soul is not satisfied with good things, and he does not even have a proper burial, then I say, better the miscarriage than he. For that one comes in vanity and goes into darkness, and that one's name is covered in darkness. Indeed, that one never sees the sun and never knows anything. That one has more rest than he. Even if the other man lives one thousand years twice and does not see good things, do not all go to the same place? All a man's labor is for his mouth, and yet the soul is not fulfilled. For what advantage does the wise man have over the fool? What advantage does the afflicted man have, knowing how to walk before the living? What the eyes see is better than what the soul goes after. This too is vanity and striving after wind. Whatever exists has already been named, and it is known what man is, and he cannot dispute with him who is stronger than he is. For there are many words which increase vanity. What then is the advantage to a man? For who knows what is good for a man during his lifetime, during the few days of his vain life? He will make do with them like a shadow. For who can tell a man what will be after him under the sun? Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Stop and Talk podcast. Thanks for joining me. In this episode, you are going to meet a man named Lee. Uh, Lee stopped to talk to me while I was out crosswalking at the corner of Harrison and Locust. Now I want to warn you from the uh, outset here that this video is full of profanity, full of blasphemy. Uh, there is just so much of it. If I tried to bleep it all out, it would just be a distraction. So I'm going to let you know that the language in this video from Lee, certainly, is pretty coarse. Now, uh, as you watch this video, uh, you are going to hear a man who is proud, arrogant, self-confident, self-assured, uh, thinks he's the smartest man in the room, if not the smartest man in the world, thinks that his common sense is superior to the common sense of any other man. He will brag about his riches. He will brag about his exploits. He will brag about his accomplishments. And he is utterly broken. He thinks he's coming very close to the end of his life. And he realizes that all of it has been vanity. And at the same time, he denies God. He hates the God he knows exists. Now, this is going to be a long conversation. Lee and I spent about an hour and a half together, and you're going to hear most of that conversation. I hope you will give it time. Um, I think there is much to be gained by the Christian in this conversation. Uh, as I answer his objections, as I try to patiently listen to what he has to say, looking for an opportunity to interject the law and the gospel into the conversation. So I think this conversation will be useful uh, to you, the Christian, in that regard. And you may know someone like Lee in your life. You may know someone, maybe even someone in your own family, who is much like Lee. Uh, someone that might even make you nervous at the thought of communicating the law and the gospel to that person. Well, I, I hope what you see in this conversation with Lee will encourage you to proclaim the gospel to the Lee in your life. Now, we're not, I'm not going to spend a lot more time as far as narrative in this. Again, this is a very long conversation. Uh, after a short time, I, I will come back uh, to say a few things, and then I might... Uh, do a brief chalk talk at the end of the conversation as a conclusion. But I think this conversation stands on its own. 
And again, I hope you, my brother and sister in Christ, uh, will gain much from it. All right, here is my conversation with Lee. Start with that. My name's Tony. Lee. Lee, good to meet you, Lee. I'm on my way to the hospital. For you or for someone else? For me. What's going on? Uh, about to blow an AR down. I came here. Heart or abdomen? Heart. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, there's a good chance I ain't getting off table. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. So, when you say there's a good chance you're not getting off the table, is is that what your gut's telling you, or is that what the doctors are telling you? I did a lot of research. Yeah, that could be a scary thing, yeah. right? You know, I mean, you you could uh, you could go on Google and find out that milk's going to kill you, and that milk's a superfood. That meat's going to kill you, and that meat's a superfood. So, I, I, I would be cautious about doing Google medicine. Yeah, I know. It. Yeah. So, uh, what are they going to do? They want me to go in there and I know they ain't going to let me out. Well, that, that's up to you. Uh, uh, well, hospitals aren't prisons. Yeah, uh, I, have, I have a dear friend who, who's uh, dealing with this with his wife. She's in uh, like a convalescent situation. Doctor's saying, oh, we can't let her go, we can't let her go. Does she want to go? Yeah. Do you think she'll be safe at home? Yeah take her home they don't own your wife yeah. right so 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 they can't they can't make you stay yeah. right yeah, no, so can. but what are, are they planning surgery for you or what, what's what are they thinking I was down in Oklahoma yeah I'm from here my mom's here I couldn't get a chiropractor you couldn't get a chiropractor? No, they want to run me through. It, with Hallmark? No, with in Oklahoma. Oh, in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. They're okay. idiots. And uh, so I came here and I went to Palma College. Yeah. Where I used to go when I was a kid. I was 17 years old. Uh huh. And they'd fix you up, get you right out the door. Yeah. Now they're playing doctor now with all the fill out the everything oh. that possibly, you know what I'm saying? Collecting yeah, yeah. Information. Yeah. So they did all these x rays I didn't want to do. All I want is my neck fixed. I uh -huh. can't bend you know and, yeah and uh she walks back in the room says you need to go to hospital i said why she says if you don't you're gonna be a dead man and i get number one i can't believe that bitch talked to me like that this was at palmer yeah so and why would she send you to the hospital she doesn't know anything about the heart right they wouldn't I mean, do me because they're they're afraid they'll explode my Oh, did you give them some medical history or something? Tell them there's something no, wrong with your heart? seen it in the x-rays. Oh, 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 okay. I have an aneurysm. Ah, and that was visible in the x-ray. Yeah, so they wouldn't touch me. Yeah. So I walk out of there all pissed off. How long ago was that? A couple days ago. Yeah. <clears throat> Took me, uh, yeah, about a few, four or five days. But I've been thinking about, you know, I'm the executor of my mom's will. Yeah. <clears throat> And nobody, there's nobody else but my two rotten brothers. The last thing I want them to do is get their hands on it. Because I know one of them used it for drugs. I don't know what the other one do. But. So did a doctor tell you to go to the hospital or are you just going, you just taking no. it yourself? So I went to the car, I went to my mom's chiropractor and I showed him my. Uh, X-ray? Referral. Okay, all right. Uh -huh. And uh, told him, look, I just need to get out of pain right now. Well, he did a little bit on me. He didn't do anything here because sure. he was afraid. Sure. He worked on my neck, but he didn't do a good job. Yeah. He didn't finish it. Yeah, it was probably, he was probably limited because he wanted to avoid doing anything to well, jeopardize the heart. He, wants to, he wasn't worried about doing anything. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he didn't do it right. It, it really takes some skill, a good chiropractor, yeah. to get it done right. And I've been to them in Denver. I've, I've lived in Denver since ninth grade. I, uh. I left and went to Denver. And I made a fortune. I made great money. But, but anyway, he he did give me a couple cracks and the same thing. He says, let's go do the test right now. Just go do the test. Go do the what test. What test do they want to do that? Like an angio or a CT, oh, a CT scan? Okay. 
And are you scheduled for one? You've got one scheduled or you're going in to schedule one? No, I just got up this morning and I walked out. I sat down in front of my computer. Yeah. I get these dizzy spells. I've been having them for 10 years. Mm. Not bad. Every once in a while. And then uh, this morning, I lost vision. I didn't pass out, but I lost my vision. It was mm. all blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I decided time to go. I don't believe in God. I never have. My dad did. Mm. I still don't. And I won't. I just can't. I'm sorry, your first name again? Lee. Lee. So, so Lee, why, why can't you? You say you can't. You say I won't, I can't, I don't. I mean, you were pretty definite about that. I but, but I'm interested in why you can't. Too much bullshit. How so? Uh, we all know the planet's older than 6,000 years. And of course, Based on what? On everything that I've read. Based on what you've read? I'm pretty... I got a lot of common sense. Okay. So you're, so you're making your common sense and your interpretation of what you read the authority? Yeah, I don't... Uh, it never done anything to me. You know what I believe in? What do you believe? The universe. What has the ten, universe the done ten, for your aorta? The ten laws of the universe. Well, what, what, what ten laws are those? You need to look them up. Okay, so then, I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm engaged talking to you, so I'm not gonna look them up right now. But, yeah. But, uh, where do those laws come from? From, I guess, from prophets that you know, not God's prophets, but. So they came from man. Like uh, some of the smartest people in history. Okay. So can, so can those laws change? Everything changes. Everything changes. I know it changes. Okay. I so didn't come here. I didn't I didn't stop because I want to get God today. Why'd you stop? Because I don't want to tell somebody. Okay. Alright. Alright, so so it's obvious why I'm out here. Yeah. Right? Okay. So I said stop and talk. Yeah, sure. I see the thing on 1.8 and all that. Yeah. And I, I know, but... What, what do you think that verse says or means? Not a clue. Okay. It says, Come let us reason together. Though your sins are like scarlet, they will be made as white as snow. So, so Lee, where, where, does, where does your morality come from? Where does your understanding, determination of right and wrong, where does that come from, Lee? I didn't have that till I was over 40. Okay, where did it come from? I was a rotten kid, fighting, stealing, okay. thieving. I was I a rotten never kid, a too. Drug addict. Yeah, me neither. I never, alcohol, I can't drink. I puke. Yeah, I, I saw what it did to my mom. I wanted nothing to do with it. I didn't see that. I just couldn't do it. Yeah. So, then, so what happened at 40? At 40, I started realizing. At 40, I started wondering why I did what I did. Okay. And I can't come up with a solution. Huh? All right. Okay. I'm 65. A little older than me. I'm 58. Talking, Same generation. I've been talking about this shit since I was uh, about 40. And, okay. And I still, I wonder, why okay. did I do what I did? I made a lot of money. I ran over $2 million through my bank. Yeah. In my business. And yeah. that's gone now? Oh, no. I I got savings. I'm, I'm, oh, okay. I'm a frugal bastard. Okay. All right. I got a lot of savings. My good, my mom. I got. I'm loaded. Okay. As far as most people consider. Yeah. I have zero debt to income ratio. I protected my credit. I paid my bills. I did everything I had to do. That's wise. That's wise. Yeah. Not nobody can. The 99% of the people driving by the street right now don't have and haven't done what I've done. I've had a great life. I was I played in a band. I had hair to the middle of my back, big hair. I, I used to be surrounded by girls. Mm. Did you ever hear of a man named Solomon? King Solomon? Yeah. Okay. So Solomon wrote a book called Ecclesiastes. And he's saying much of what you're saying right now. King Solomon, blessed with more wisdom than any man who ever lived. 
blessed with more wealth, your $2 million, that's a burp to him. Yeah. Right? Blessed with more wealth, had more women than, than you would ever know. Right? Had it all, had peace in his kingdom for the 40 some years that he reigned. And he got to the end of his life and he said this, it's all vanity. It's meaningless. It is. I know. Yeah. So, Lee, let me ask you this. I, I'm going to, we've known each other for 10 minutes, right? But I'm going to assume that you and I are going to agree on this. That it is wrong for someone to crawl into some child's bedroom window late at night, kidnap that child, murder that child, and bury that child in a shallow grave for the fun of it. I'm going to, I'm going to argue that you and I agree that that's wrong. Right. Okay. Is that understanding of right and wrong, and on that point you and I agree, that, that wild, crazy scenario, something that unfortunately does happen, right? right? right. But I pick something outrageous to make a point. Still happens. Still happens. True. Right. So, is it up to the individual to determine morality, right and wrong for themselves? What do you think? You know, it, it, it's, it's up to all of us to have our own morality. Okay. Okay. But so, just because somebody's a screwed up, don't make it right. Okay. Now, all right. So let's let's pause there for a second. I know where you're going. Where am I going? It's still what he thinks is right. It's still what I think is right. Okay. But what? But is what he did right? In my mind, no. Okay. So. In his mind, maybe. All right. So then. So then, Lee, if it's up to the individual to determine morality, right and wrong, even though you and I would say that he, believe that he's wrong for what he did, you and I can't impose that belief on him. We can't tell that guy, hey, you shouldn't do that, that's wrong, because morality's up to the individual. Correct. We don't live that way though, Lee, do we? No. 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 Right? No. Okay, so, so then maybe someone would argue, well, okay, it's not up to the individual, it's up to society. We have laws. We have laws that would say. It happened again, <laughs> as it often does, it seems. Uh, my camera battery died. And if you've been watching uh, my videos for any length of time, if you've been watching the Stop and Talk podcast, uh, you know that if my camera battery dies, that's it. I'm not going to stop a conversation. I'm not going to interrupt a conversation so I can change out the battery in my camera to make sure that I record the conversation. Um, I was disappointed that the, that the uh, battery died. I was hoping uh, that, to be able to capture this conversation uh, with Lee. I, I thought it would be useful. But in God's providence, the camera battery died. Uh, Lee and I talked for another 15 minutes or so, and then Lee looked at me and he asked, are you recording this? And I said, well, no, the, my camera battery died some time ago. The, the camera's off. Well, I want you to record this. I, I, I need this to be recorded. I, I want people to hear this. It was as if, uh, as I continued to talk to Lee, uh, realizing why he wanted this to be recorded, it was as if I was hearing the dying declaration of this man. Uh, as you've already heard, he's on his way to the, the hospital. Uh, he uh, believes that he may not make it out of the hospital alive. Uh, he believes the, his aorta is going to rupture and he is going to die. Uh, and so this is, in a sense... Uh, a man's dying declaration. And so at Lee's request, I put a new camera battery in and started recording and we pick up the conversation there. Okay. Everybody's an asshole. Everybody. One way or another. I mean, you go out of your way to do things and I, I know you, you go out of your way to do stuff. There's some people around that aren't afraid, and I've been doing it my whole life, and that's where the tenfold universe law comes in. I've given shit away, 
and the next thing I know I'm hitting on a $30,000 pile of money just like that out of the blue guys walk I'm at a I'm at a garage sale I buy RC stuff resell and fly airplanes I'm at a garage sale I asked the girl I, I got any RC stuff airplanes cars anything remote control no we don't I start walking down the driveway and I get out sidewalk and the guy comes up and he says hey you looking for RC stuff? He's like, I'll sneak. I'm like, yeah. He says, I'll, I'll sell you some, but you gotta buy it all. And I said, I got plenty of money, let's go. He took me up to his garage and he sold me an amazing pile of 1954 and on RC stuff, brand new. I made, I made $32,000 off that in about eight months, parting it out on eBay along with everything else and just before that happened we were getting ready to move and i gave a whole bunch of stuff to the poor people live next to me good stuff couches and chairs and okay i just give it all to them and the next thing i know that guy shows up gives me a ton of shit this keeps happening and kept happening all through my 40s and 50s. I couldn't make a mistake, man. I couldn't make a mistake. Everything I touched turned to gold. And then, then it all fell apart. And something happened to me, and I'm losing my teeth. And my body's wasted. My, my, everything's gone. Every little, every little piece of me is broken now. My knees, my legs, my hips, mm -hmm. my back, my neck. I got whiplash and driving. I drove race cars in Denver for 15 years. I played in a band in Denver for 17 years. I have my own shop, five mechanics that I had to make sure went home with a paycheck. Mm -hmm. And they always did. I took care of everybody around me, everybody. Maybe I was an asshole, okay? Maybe I was a jerk. But everybody got their paychecks, everybody got paid and, paid, and nobody got lied to. I did everybody right. And now I'm sitting here all by my fucking self. And I got nothing. My, mom's, I'm, my mom freaks out when she hears this shit. She almost wants to cover her ears. She wants to spend the last few years of her life just being smooth and safe and comfortable. So I can't go deal with this shit. I started talking about her and she starts getting mad. She gets upset. And so I laid off. My mom and me were never really great talkers. We have lots to say, but we don't listen. We never have. I love my mom, but I'm mad at her. And I've always been mad at her. And my dad, he's dead. My dad left us nothing. All the kids, nothing. What a fucking prick. So yeah, I'm really pissed off. So lead to all of that, according to your godless worldview my response respectfully would be so what right and i think that's where you've come to I, is I'm, I'm like so what because because lee if all we are are the products of some evolutionary process if we are just basically pond scum that has evolved into what we are today if we're just random chemical reactions then lee so what? Look, if I take a if I take a bottle of Coke and I take a bottle of Mountain Dew and I shake them both up and I open up and I open up the bottles and they both fizz, which one's right? Which one's wrong? Doesn't, which one's good? Which one's evil? There doesn't have to be a right and wrong. Well, Lee, there isn't there isn't in that because they're just chemical reactions. So, so Lee, it's easy. It's so easy to say there is no God and we're just the byproduct of evolutionary processes because then we don't have to be responsible for anything. If, if we're you we're just pond scum evolved into gray if, matter. If you don't believe in extraterrestrials, which I don't, I believe that this is the only planet that has happened because I know that thousands of things, events 
events on the planet had to happen in a row to make us become what we are. But Lee, without, but Lee, that is nothing more than your arbitrary opinion. There, you, there's no authority underneath any of that. Do you believe in dinosaurs? Absolutely, they walked with man, you, you bet. Okay. Well, yeah, they, they, did. they didn't walk with Homo sapiens. Yeah, no, they did. They walked with they some did. classes underneath no, Homo sapiens. No, there's I no, believe. there's no. Uh, uh, right. So, Lee, regarding that, what do you think is more important, what we believe, or whether or not what we believe is true? What do you think is more important, what we believe, or whether or not what we believe is true? Well, if we believe something, we would believe it's true. Okay. All right, so then, Lee, um, unlike you, you know, you, you say you have, you're set, you've made a great deal of money, you've, you're the executor of your mom's estate and what have you, you're set. Unlike you, I don't have a couple of million dollars in the bank. But let's say, Lee, I believed it with all my heart. That you had it? That I had it. Well, and you'd be foolish. Whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. If what I believe is more important than whether or not what I believe is true, I'm not being foolish. So I go over to the bank, I go over to US Bank on my way home from here, and I decide I've got two million in the bank, I'm gonna withdraw a million of it. So I write out the withdrawal slip for a million dollars. Mary, the sweet young teller behind the window who sees me from time to time. Hi, Mr. Miano, how you doing? Great, hey, I'm here to make a withdrawal. I, I hand her the slip. She looks at it, she kind of looks back at me, looks at the slip, getting a little uncomfortable. So wow, and she's thinking, well, maybe he got an inheritance. Maybe he won the lottery. You know, maybe he just patented something. Maybe. Right. So she runs the numbers and she finds out I have 3850 in my account. Is she gonna give me a million bucks because I believe it? <laughs> no. No. It but doesn't it Lee, it doesn't matter what I believe about my account. What matters is what's true about my account, I, Lee. I, I say that that's not a very good hypothesis. Sure it is, Lee. The reason you say it's not a good hypothesis is because it dismantles your worldview. See, Lee, you know that it's more important that what's more important is whether or not what we believe is true. I'm, That's I'm, how you live your life. I'm a realist. I, I believe, and I I believe in what's real, what's happening. I can I can take apart things that are going on. And Lee, how do you determine what's real, and what's happening? How do you determine that? My common sense tells me. How do you know your common sense and your reasoning is even valid? How do you know that? Because my common sense made great choices in life when it was necessary, when, when... Lee, that's, a, that's called a viciously circular argument. You believe what you believe because you believe it. I believe it because I experience You're the authority. But yeah, you don't even know if your experiences I'm, are valid. I also believe that pessimism is the, is the result of experience. So Lee, again, respectfully, so what? Because all you're giving me are opinions. My opinions and you're giving me yours. I am not, I'm, I'm appealing to an authority outside of both you and me, an, author, an authority that you and I are subjected to. But it's your opinion that that book it's not is, my opinion. Is, is real. It's not my opinion. I, God has said it's real. To you. No, it, it, reality isn't based on what I determine and what you determine, Lee. Again, that's arbitrary. That's like the guy going into the kid's bedroom, killing the kid and burying the kid in the, in the shallow grave. Hey, that was good to me. That was my reality. This is my world. We know that's wrong. Lee, the reason we know that's wrong is because God created you and me. You and me are both image bearers of our creator. We were both created in the image of God. He's given us both a conscience. You know the difference between right and wrong, not because you're wise, not because you're experienced, not because you're good or bad, but because the God who created you has written his law in your heart. You know it's wrong to lie, Lee, because the God who created you isn't a liar. You know it's wrong to steal, Lee, right. because the God who created you isn't a thief. Yeah. There are societies that raise their children to steal and tell them it's there good. There are, there are. And those kids know it's wrong. I witnessed that. And those Denver. kids and those kids know it's wrong, Lee, because they were created by well, the same God you and I were. They didn't know it was wrong because their they parents did. taught them it was right. No, God's written, God wrote their, wrote his, look, if, 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 uh, if someone, if someone, if someone tells their, their 15 year old son, hey, I want you to see those two guys talking over there at the quick shop, I want you to go drive a knife into both their, both their hearts. I want you to go kill both those men. You're going to please me if you do that. 
The kid may come over here and do it, but the kid knows it's wrong. Regardless of what his parents tell him. Maybe he knows wrong. No, he does know it's wrong, Lee, because the God who created him, Lee, isn't a murderer. That's why he knows it's wrong. And and Lee, you look, Lee, you sat down today. I am so glad to meet you, and I'm so glad you sat down. Lee, I don't I don't know your mind. I, I can't read your mind, right? I, I, don't, I don't presume to know what's going on in your heart and your mind at the time. But Lee, I've been doing this for a long, long time, many, many years. I've had many, many people, hundreds, thousands of people, Lee, sit down right here, and I have these conversations. Yep. And Lee, I'm gonna make a couple of assertions. Lee, you're scared and you don't wanna die. No, I don't wanna, I, I would like to spend some of the shit I work so hard for. Right. But Lee, what you also know is that you are going to die. Someday. Oh, I know. 10 out of 10 people die. Lee, I hope you have a lot of years ahead of you. I, I do. I do, Lee. I honestly do because I care about you as my neighbor, as a fellow human being. But Lee, it's appointed once for a person to die and then the judgment. You're going to leave all this vanity behind. You're not going to become worm food. Your physical body will. You're going to rot in the grave. Some people may come and talk to your dust. You're not going to hear a word. That's going to make them feel better. They're yeah. going to put a flower at your marker, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Lee, you're going to become worm food in a physical sense. When you're but, dead, you're but dead. But Lee, you're going to stand before God to give an account for your life, just like you, me and every other human being. And he is going to judge you, Lee, according to the law that he's written on your heart. You know, and he's going to find you guilty, just like you would find me guilty, Lee. Let me tell you. three people standing at the gates of heaven waiting to get in. One guy never believed in God. The other two were, you know, astute believers. And God talked to them and said, why do you think you'd be here? Well, I read the Bible. I did everything. I did everything. And why shouldn't that man be here? Because he didn't, he didn't trust you. He didn't believe in you. He didn't do nothing. He belongs in hell same thing from the other guy God looks back and says he's coming with me you two that think you can judge other people under God's laws are going to hell yeah. so Lee you're not going to be judged by a skit but what you just described Jesus told a similar story there was a, a, you heard the term Pharisee before no. A Pharisee, a Pharisee at the time of Jesus was one of the ruling Jewish leaders. They were the, they, they were the upper crust. They were the authority in the Jewish community. They were, they were called Pharisees. So there is a Pharisee who comes to the temple, and then there's a Jewish tax collector. The tax collector, at the time, was the most despised man in all of Jew, Jewish culture because that tax collector voluntarily worked for Rome to take the Jewish people's money and then he would steal from the Jewish people's mo people their money on top of that. They were utterly despised, utterly wicked. So you've got this one guy who's religious, who thinks he's following God, and you've got this tax collector who's considered the scum of the earth by his own people. So the Pharisees, Pharisee starts to pray at the temple. He says, God, I, I, I've given you a tenth of everything I have, all my money, all my produce, you know, and I, and I pray and I, I do all of these things. And at least I'm not like that guy, the tax collector. The tax collector, he begins to pray. He can't even lift his head. And he says, Lord, forgive me, a sinner. And here's the difference between the story you told me and the story I just told you. We, in both stories, we have the same kinds of people. We have self-righteous religious people, and we have a scoundrel, a, 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 a dirtbag, mm -hmm. you know, a wicked person. Both the story you told me and the story I told you have the same characters. Yeah. Here's the difference. God didn't just look at that scoundrel and say, oh, you're coming. And you religious people, you hypocrites, no, you're gone. That's not what happened, Lee, that's not what happened. That scoundrel came to the understanding that that's who in fact he was. 
And he cried out to God for mercy. Mm -hmm. He cried out to God for mercy, Lee. And that's what you need. You need, you need mercy, Lee. You need grace. Look, when I die, and I'm going to die, and look, you're, you may die soon, you may not. I may die on the way home. Yeah. Uh, I, I've had some minor heart conditions too, nothing like what you're experiencing. But my ticker could go now, right now, while we're talking. Don't right? anybody drop dead in minutes. Right. We're not promised our next. We're not promised tomorrow, let alone our next breath. That's right. But here's the thing, Lee. When I die and stand before God, if God were to ask me, Tony, why should I allow you into heaven? Why should I allow you into my kingdom? I'm not going to say, well. God, I, I mean, I, I, I spent hours, weeks, months, years of my life out there on the corner with a cross telling people about you. I go to church every Sunday. I, 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 give, I give a tenth or more of everything I own. I try, to, I try to help people. If someone comes up to me and says they're hungry, I try to give them something to eat. You know, if they need a bus ticket, I might give them a bus ticket. God, I've done all these good things. I think you ought to let me into your kingdom. That's not what I'm going to say. In fact, Jesus, in talking about people that I just described, he said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name and do many mighty works in your name, even cast out demons in your name? And Jesus said, I'll say to them, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of lawlessness. He's talking to religious people. Right. He's not talking to the atheists. He's talking to religious right. people. No, Lee, when I die and stand before God, if he asks me, Tony, why should I allow you into my kingdom? I'm going to tell him, God, you shouldn't. Because I've broken your law every day of my life. I've, I've lied. I've stolen. I, I've taken God's name in vain. Look, Lee. I got the same story. Okay, well, listen. Time doesn't forgive sin. Before I came to faith in Jesus Christ, I was a young deputy sheriff who thought it was fun to, to abuse inmates physically and, and verbally and emotionally Monday through Saturday. And then I would go to church and sing on the choir on Sunday. Yeah. That was who I was, Lee. What a hypocrite, huh? What a hypocrite, exactly. But Lee, he changed my heart. And when I die and stand before God, I'm gonna say, God, you shouldn't let me in because I have broken your law. I've sinned against you. What I deserve, what you owe me is hell. But I know you're gonna let me in. Not because I'm good, but because you are. Not because of who I am, but in spite of who I am. Not because of what I've done, but in spite of what I've done. And Lee, the reason I could say that with confidence is because God the Father, the God who created you, sent his son to earth in the person of Jesus Christ. Truly God, truly man, and without sin. He lived a life of perfection, Lee, for some 33 years that you and I can't live for 33 seconds. Yet even though he knew no sin, yeah. at a time appointed by God the Father before the foundation of the world, this God-man, Jesus Christ, voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous, bloody death of a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself, Lee, the punishment I rightly deserve for my sins against God. He forever defeated sin and death three days later when he rose from the grave. I'm going to heaven, Lee, not because of who I am, but because of who Christ is. Right. And Lee, it doesn't matter whether or not I believe that. What matters is whether or not what I believe is true. And God is true, though every man is found to be a liar. And Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. So, Lee, you say you can't and you won't. I and, just can't. And on your own, Lee, you can't and you won't. God has to change your heart. God has to change your That's heart. That's right. And he's not obligated to, because Lee, all God owes all God owes you, Lee, is the same thing he owes me, Blind. and that's hell for all eternity, because you've sinned against him all your life. If he offered anything, it was a chance to live a good life. You can't live a good life, Lee. Lee, you haven't lived a good life, not according to God's standard. Jesus said, "Not you, every minute, not every minute." Well, here's the problem, though, Lee. Here's the problem. Jesus said, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Because no sin can be in his presence, Lee. Well, nobody's perfect. You're, you're right. You know. you're, you're looking at an imperfect man. You're right. But Lee, if you're going to try to commend yourself to the God who created you by being a good person, then all you have to do is live a perfect life from cradle to grave in thought, word, and deed. Yeah. And like me, Lee, you've fallen short of that. I understand.
understand. Okay. God forgives in your not arbit not arbitrarily. He doesn't just maybe, forgive. No, but he will look inside and see the person that's in there and make a decision. Is now I don't know. You know I. I, I don't. I never read the Bible. I, the only church I ever went to, some bastard tried to try to grab me in the goddamn back room. Okay, agnostic church out here somewhere. Yeah. When I was a little kid. Yeah. That doesn't change who God is, yeah. and it doesn't change what He requires change, of you. I changed who I was. And when I told my old man, I ran out of that room. I told my old man, and everybody in there was holding him back from going and ripping that dude's head I off. I bet. Okay. I bet. Watch it. Asshole up here took yeah. a fucking board to me, man. Hit me ten times with an oak paddle. That, yeah, wide, that was wicked. Holes drilled in it. That was wickedly. He hit me seven times. That was wicked. That I was didn't wickedly. Cry. But here, then he hit me three more, and I said, "I better yeah. cry, or the motherfucker won't stop beating me." That was wickedly. That was wicked. And if that person doesn't repent and put their faith and trust in Christ alone, they're gonna face eternity in hell well, he for did. that wicked sin. And I okay. hope he's there. Okay. So, so Lee, what you just expressed is murder in your own heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. no murderer will enter into the kingdom of heaven. I was a happy, I was a happy, uh, hyperactive kid. I was hyperactive. I didn't have ADHD. I had OCD. I was just hyperactive. All these stupid names they're bringing up and making up drugs that they're going to fix which they've just figured out that is not a chemical imbalance in your body and they can't really fix it. All they can do is make you stupid. That's all they can do with drugs, make you stupid. Yeah, yeah Lee, the answer isn't in medication, legislation, or even education. The answer is in reconciliation. Reconciliation of man to God. And the only way man's gonna be reconciled to the God who created him is through faith in Jesus Christ. Well, I feel like it's time for me to reconcile inside myself, and I've done so. I've had a good, good life, better than most people, 90% yeah. of and, the and people. In, and Lee, in the end, without Christ, it means nothing. It may not mean nothing. It means nothing, Lee. And I, and I, but then again... And you know it. Lee, you know it. No, You've expressed it yourself. You know the vanity of that. Yeah. You know it. Hey, it's all been worthless, okay? Because now I got all the health problems that, uh, yeah. that came with race car driving mm -hmm. and, and breathing in carburetor cleaner all yeah, day true. long. And yeah. you know, when I, I used to I'd go to Kmart, people could come in the front door. And a lot of people knew me in Denver. I was a carburetor expert. Everybody in Denver knew I was the man. And they, I've done so many people's cars, up to six, seven cars a day. People knew that I was just standing in the sport section. They knew I was in Kmart. They come in the front door, they could smell me. And they go, hey, that Lee's here. I know he's here, I can smell him. And they come find me. And I got sick of that crap. I don't want somebody to be able to scent me out like a dog. It made me feel bad. And that's when I shut up. Well, my see the difference see this hands all messed up oh the right hand yeah, yeah. I got carpal tunnel tendonitis all in our damn the seventh all that repetitive wrong. motion and screwdrivers I ripped myself apart I did it while I was in pain I wanted that money so goddamn bad for what yeah for what well you know what I tried hard to buy a house I could never find it I drove me and my lady me I drove my old lady nuts and I was mean to her and I didn't mean to be, but I'm in so much pain and I'm not getting what I need out of life. All I needed was a nice place for us to go settle down and live the rest of our life. But I could never find it. It wasn't out there. It was all too much work for me now. I'm too old, or too expensive. I don't want to blow all my money on a house. I have nothing left. And so we were in that. Well, I destroyed my old lady. She hates my guts now and I love her. And I was mean to her, and I, I didn't mean to be mean to her, but I can't overcome this, this. I took, I took several common sense tests, and then they emailed the answer. One of the emails came back to me. The first thing it said in great big letters at the top says, it's lonely at the top, isn't it? <laughs> and it hit me like a ton of bricks. All these guys, I'm fighting in my garage. Come on, man, you, really? You're gonna do, dude, all, you can't figure this out. You don't, you think that's the right way? When you, you know, you've done it before. 
and they all they just keep doing the same shit over and over and I get pissed off at them I'm tired of them I broke so many toolboxes to the door of my garage and threw people out of it for being stupid and not having any common sense common sense gets you through life but it doesn't but it doesn't get you through death Lee that's true it doesn't get you through death but because you're going to stand before the God you deny every, and your common sense won't help you, Lee. Every time I hear this, I think of me and my dad when I was six, seven, maybe eight, sitting on the curb doing a brake job on my dad's car. And he's showing me nuts to take out and how to put wrenches on. And all of a sudden, my mom was going wanting to go to church. My dad wouldn't go. My dad looked at me and said, son, when you're dead, you're dead. That's not true. That's, well, that's Your dad was wrong. Maybe, maybe not. No, not maybe not, Lee. And and Lee, you actually know that he was wrong. Mm -mm. Because God has written the reality of his existence on your heart. He's written his law on your heart. You know you're going to stand before him, Lee. But what you're doing is you're suppressing the truth by your unrighteousness. You're professing to be wise but you are rendering yourself a fool because you are worshiping the creature, in namely you, instead of the creator. In one area, there's one, there's one line that I'm gonna walk up to here and I'm gonna have to make that choice at that time. Maybe I won't make that choice. Maybe someone will make that choice for me. But there's gonna come a point in my life and it's goddamn close right now. I, I, I wish it was today, Lee. My prayer for you is that it would be today, Lee, that you would repent and put your trust in Christ today. Because Lee, if you go to that hospital, they put you on a table, they cut you open, and that's it, lights out, you're done. There are no second chances, that's Lee. Right. There are no second chances. Maybe I don't want one. Maybe I'm sick of everybody out here. Man, Ma I'm tired of them. I, I understand. Dude, I Maybe go, you don't. I go out of my way to be, I say hello to everybody, they ignore me. Okay, I do nice things for people, they don't appreciate it. But I learned, if I do something nice from somebody, don't ever expect it from them. It'll come back to you tenfold. If you wait and the universe decides it's time for you to have what you've got coming. And that has You're worked. worshiping the creature rather than the creator. No. You're worshiping the you're worshiping the universe God created instead of the God who created the okay. universe. Okay. You're an idolater. Isn't Lee. that good enough? No, it's not. Not for God. What? Not for, because what? God said so. Because God said so. What? Lee, Lee, think Lee, think about this, Lee. Think about this. There are a billion people around the world um, who will cut down a tree. They will use a portion of that tree to build a house. They'll use a portion of that tree to warm that house and to cook their food. And then they'll take what's left of the tree and they'll carve an idol out of it and they'll put it up on the mantle and they'll bow down and they'll pray to that piece of wood. Yeah. Lee, that's what you're doing in your mind. That's idolatry. That's what you're doing, Lee. You're, you're, instead of thanking the God who created you, you've created a God in your imagination to suit yourself and his name is Lee. Yeah. His name is Lee. Hey, you want to know something? I felt like a god. I felt like I could do no wrong. And you've never been a god, Lee. I know. And you never will be. I felt like I was above a lot of people. Why? Because I, I, I did jobs that nobody could do. I did them right. I took my time. I did them right. When I sent them out the door, it was right. And if there was a mistake, just bring it back in. And Lee, that's called pride. And the Bible says pride comes before destruction. And you're experiencing the destruction in part in a physical right now, sense I'm, now, I, I Lee. Am. You're so <laughs> this is what this is what all I your know. all this is what all your pride has got you, Lee is a destination with a hospital table and stopping here to talk to the crazy guy on the corner with the cross. I just look, That's where all your pride has gotten you. That's where all your wait, money's gotten you, Lee. Wait, it's brought you to this point. Wait, I didn't stop here because you were a man with a cross, okay? Okay, I why'd you stop? I stopped here because you were a man that was willing to talk. Okay. Maybe willing to listen. Yeah, and I, got I, and I to, think I've done both. I got something to say. And, and I think I've let you say it, it has, right? It right? It's been a back and forth, right? All right. I wanted to say it to somebody. And I'm okay. going to say it again right now. I'm sick of this shit. I'm ready to go. You're not okay. ready to go, Lee. 
You're ready to be worried about my mom. Lee, my mom is the only one that did anything for me. My and whole and life. and Lee, if the Big Bang Theory is right, and if if everything is just the byproduct of evolution, so what about caring for your mom? It doesn't mean anything. But it means something to you, Lee. And you know why, Lee? Because God has given you a conscience, Lee. Not, beca not because there's some arbitrary ten laws of the universe that you're following, Maybe. but because the God who created you has written the law in your heart that says, honor your mother. I, That's I'll, why, Lee. I'll make a deal with you. You go read those ten laws of the universe. And if I walk off that table, I'll come back here. And we'll have another discussion. So here's the, here's the thing about that, Lee. I was in law enforcement for 20 years out in L.A. And whenever counterfeit money would come into our area, we got word that there's counterfeiters spreading funny money in, in town. Right. We didn't collect the funny money and study the funny money. We made sure that we knew what the genuine article looked like. Right. That because The reason for that, Lee, is because counterfeiters are different. They use different methods. They use different printing presses. They use different inks. They use different paper. They all counterfeit differently. Yeah. So we studied the real thing so that no matter what the counterfeit was put in front of us, we'd recognize it right away. Right. 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 Your 10 laws of the universe is counterfeit money, Lee. Reason, I've got the real thing. I've got the word of God. Wait, I want you to read them. Oh, I'll, I'll read them. I'll because, read them. Uh, I'll, I'll look them up. These 10, what, how would I find them? Go on the internet and, the and 10 say, laws of the universe. 10 laws of the universe, okay. Or the 10 universal laws. Okay. And I think that you're going to find that those are real close to your laws. Mm. The ones that you believe that God gave yeah. you. Yeah, close is not good enough though, Lee. Well, I... Just, I like, may, just like a counterfeit that's close not, to the real thing will never eye. be real money. I only say close because I don't believe in God. Okay? You do. But I got a feeling that that you're going to see that what I yeah. believe in just might be what you're preaching. Nope. You don't you don't know yet. Please don't say no till you read them so, and understand them and then you look at those and you tell me those laws and you believe in God. So you read those and you tell me that God didn't make those laws yeah. and I think that you so, won't say that. So if we're talking about laws of gravity, nope. laws of nope. mathematics, nope. laws of logic, nope. Nope. those nope. are those are all no? Spirit, okay. They're all spiritual. Oh, okay. Okay. Please. So I, I, I told you I'd look it up and I will and, and I will but Lee you do believe in God you simply hate him no, I don't. You, you do believe in God Lee you simply hate him because God's the authority on it you're not you're suppressing the truth you know about God by your unrighteousness you love your sin in fact you love death the word of God says and you hate the God who made you and you dress it up as I don't believe no I agree I was pissed off, and I'm not going to say God, at the MF who made me, okay? I'm pissed off at him, okay? I busted my ass my whole life. That's because you believe Nothing God owes you something. That be, that's because you believe God owes you something good. God, God owes me the chance to God, live on no, this he planet. No, he doesn't. He doesn't owe you that. Put me here? He does he, Why? To worship him, and you've refused. To glorify him, I and you've not, refused. I and so since you won't glorify him in your life, you will glorify him in your destruction. You will glorify him in your destruction. Lee, the only thing God owes you or any other human being is the punishment for your sin. That's all God owes you. Because you're not a good person. Dude. Neither am I. Hey. We're not good people, Lee. I'm We're bad. sinners. Jesus didn't come for good people. I'm Jesus bad. didn't come for righteous people. Jesus came for sinners, Lee. And you're a sinner like me. Cover that camera. Cover it, sir. Hard. Cover it. Two times. And I was done. That's murder, Lee. That's, That's murder done. of self. I didn't do it. But you got it. Real yeah, I, I beg of you, don't. And, and I'm not doing it now. I don't need to. If I want to go kill myself right now, I'll just go empty that pile of trash I just took out of my mom's garage. I'll fall over dead in the dump. I don't, I don't give a shit no more. I, I understand that, Lee. I don't. I know. Because you've realized that all you've done is nothing but vanity, that your goodness has amounted to nothing. Nah, 
I have nothing. No, that your no. money amounts to nothing. No, that's not true. That's not true. My goodness brought me here to take care of my mom. So what, Lee? And, and, Lee. And now at the end, and all this time, I, I never finished the story. All this time, we're looking for what we want. We can't get it. And I finally said to Debbie, after I've tortured her and she's sick of me, okay? Is that your ex-wife? Yeah, wife, well, wife. 14 years together. Okay. Live together. And I punished the shit out of her. And it wasn't her fault. I knew, and I said it a million times, if we don't stop working together, we're gonna get, we're gonna end up breaking up. You can't be my employee. You're not good enough to be my employee. But it was forced on us because we're doing eBay together. I told her, quit your job if you hate it so bad. Let's go into eBay. I've been doing it. I know how to do it. We'll make money. We made fortunes on there together, but I punished her the whole goddamn time. And I punished her all the way up till we left Oklahoma. She hates my guts. She can't stand to look at me. She, we're being real nice to each other right now because I done gave her my dog. I gave her my truck. That truck right there is going to Denver soon. I gave her everything. I got a motorcycle in there. I got, uh, I got, I'm on disability too, by the way. And uh, so I give her everything. Everything that I could possibly give her to help her get to where she wants to be. I'm not torturing her, I'm not punishing her. I'm letting her go the easy way. I want her to have a good life. I gave her $3,000, uh, gave her my truck, gave her my dog. I love that. I took that dog from somebody that was abusing it. Well, I know she can, she'll take good care of it. So I'm gonna let him go because he'll protect her. Pitbull. And, and I made a lot of mistakes in the last few years. And I'm pissed off at myself for being such an idiot to ruin the only person that was taking care of me. How could I be so stupid with all the common sense? You're, because you're because Lee, you're because Lee, you're not governed by common sense. You're governed by sin. You're governed by self-righteousness. You're governed by pride, and you're, you're governed by you're you're governed by sin and death, Lee. That's what you're governed by. You're not governed by goodness. You're not governed by righteousness. I feel you're not even I... governed by common sense because you're suppressing you're suppressing the truth. You're denying the only one Lee who can save you. You're denying that because your pride says that you're God. You're not Lee. I you're... know. I know I'm not. You I know, know I, I do. I do, Lee. You know. I do. And I know, Lee, that you do know that God exists I and that you <laughs> hate him, Lee. You hate him. You know, in a way, I do, because, he, I'll tell you something, man. You go stand outside a church with a camera and just start recording the people going in and out. And you will see these people turn on you. They don't know who you are, what you're doing, why you're there. You're standing on a public street with a camera taking pictures, and they want to come out. What are you doing? Why are you here? What is all this? Get away from our church. Lee, it gets, blah, blah. it gets worse than that, Lee. It gets worse than that. Because oh, you're going to stand before God, and he's already seen the entire movie of your life, Lee. Yeah. Yeah. And he's going to send you to hell for all eternity as the just punishment for your crimes against him. God's not going to judge you, Lee, based on, based on what you see in other people. God's going to judge you based on what you have done with the life that he has given you. The life that you have thrown away, Lee. Loving yourself and loving your sin and loving death. You know what I want That's to hear? the basis. I want to hear somebody tell me I did a good damn job. You're, well, look, Lee, you'll find, you'll find someone like yourself to tell you that. But God's not going to tell you that, Lee. Well, but it's because a God's job. standard of goodness is moral perfection, and you've never lived a morally perfect moment in your life. Neither have I. Neither have I, Lee. Well, You're going to stand before the God friends. who is holy and righteous friends? and just. Yes, and my friends love me enough to say, Tony, you're not a good person, you need Christ. Tony, you're a sinner like me and you need Christ. Do they come to your house? Yes. Do they sit down and hang out and talk with you? Yes, I spent uh, just uh, Monday, I spent a whole day out on the water with, with uh, my friend Brad and, and his three sons. 
Huh? They invited you to come out on the boat. Yeah, we went out to someone's pond. We all stood around I've the had, pond. We fished all day. I've had four boats in my life. I invited everybody to go. Yeah. Nobody's fucking inviting me. So what? So I want some friends. I want some company. I'm alone. What you need, Lee, is Christ. What you need is to be reconciled to the God you've offended all your life by your sin. What you need is forgiveness, Lee. What you need is grace and mercy. And Lee, the problem is, you're laughing now. I'm not laughing. But God laughs at his enemies, Lee. Well, what's that? Was that? A laugh? Well, I can't see your eyes, so I that can't was, tell. That was almost a crime. Okay, all right. And it's not because of this conversation. It's because of everything in the past. Okay, I'm about ready to, I'm, I'm ready to break down. I'm fighting like crazy. I, I know you are. And, and Lee, the word of God says that a broken and contrite heart, he will not turn away, Lee. <laughs> a broken and contrite heart, Lee, he will not turn away. God is love, Lee. But you have to come to God on his terms because God doesn't negotiate with sinners like us, Lee. You know what I'm telling you is true. You know what I'm telling you is true, Lee. You need Christ. Well, Humble yourself. God's opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble, Lee. I'm not going to deny that little part because everybody reaches a point in their life they need someone. Whether it be moral support, physical help, mental support, whatever it is, everybody comes to need someone. I just walk out of goddamn house and nobody gives a shit. Nobody will give a shit. When I'm gone, nobody will give a shit. Sure, Debbie will cry a little bit. My mom will cry a little bit. But I was the biggest pain in the ass of these people you ever, that you would possibly know. My mom wouldn't come visit me in jail. My dad come visit me, but he wrecked his car one time. He wrecked his car on the way there. And he walked into jail cell. I wrecked my goddamn car because of you. And he walked out of the cell, walked out. Oh, fuck you. Well, my old man's a dickhead. I didn't live his way. Yeah, like, me and mom had had big problems. You're, you're, Lee, you're clinging. Huh? You're you're clingingly, clinging. you're desperately clingingly the, to your own righteousness, yeah. and it's going to kill you, I Lee. Am. You I need know I am. you need you're Christ. Right, Humble yourself, Lee. I Turn to I'm Christ right. and live while God has given you time. I feel. Yeah, I know you feel right. you're right, and you feel you're right, Lee, and you know you're wrong. You no, feel you're right and you know you're wrong, but you're too it. proud to admit it, Lee. Maybe. You're too proud and your Maybe. pride is killing you, Lee. Maybe. Your pride is killing you. Maybe. There are, no, there are no proud people in heaven, Lee. I cannot God did. God is opposed to the proud and he gives grace. He gives unmerited favor, Lee. He gives grace to the humble. Lee, so you mentioned being in jail. Yeah. Hear me out for a minute. I was kidding. You, you mentioned being in jail. So let's say, Lee, you know, you're at the end of your rope, you know, you're, you've had it with things, you're gonna take matters into your own hands, you're gonna get a little vengeance, whatever it is. This is all hypothetical. But you break the law, Lee, you find yourself before the judge, judge finds you guilty and he sentences you to death. And so unlike our system, where now you're gonna get 10 or 20 years of appeals, three hots and a cot, a free education, all the weights and porn you can handle on my dime. Right. They're gonna take you into the next room immediately. They're gonna strap you to a gurney. They're gonna shove a needle in your arm and they're gonna put you to sleep like a stray dog. But Lee, before they do that, the judge who found you guilty and the judge who alone had the authority to sentence you to death, he steps down from that bench. He takes off those black robes of authority. He walks over to you and he says, Lee, you are guilty. Lee, you do deserve to die, and I'm going to take your place. And the judge walks into the next room. He allows himself to be strapped to a gurney with Lee's name on it. He allows a needle to be driven into his arm with Lee's name on it, and he dies the death you deserve, not because you're innocent, not because you're good, but because the judge chose to show grace and mercy and love to you, and you're set free. Yeah, and that would be one hell of a good thing, maybe, but... It don't happen, and it ain't never. It happened. has happened, Lee. Who did? It has happened. Who did? It happened at the cross. 
That's where justice and mercy kiss. There, okay, there. That's where God, the judge of the universe, in the person of Jesus Christ, fully God, truly God, and truly man, died a death he did not deserve so that sinners like you and me could be set free. By the way... So I turn do. to Christ and live, Lee, while God's given you time. Turn to Christ and live, Lee. Well, we'll just see what happens after this operation. And you're presuming upon something God hasn't promised you, Lee. I'm and that's your and that's your next breath. And I'm not asking for anything more. I just want my mom taken care of. My daughters, I'm gonna leave good plenty to my daughters to help them out down further down life. And I'm good. God damn it, I'm No sorry. you're not. I'm good. No, you're not, Lee. You're not. You're not, Lee. <laughs> you're not good. You're not in a good place. You're not going to leave anybody with anything good. You you're know, not, Lee. You know why I believe people die when they get old? Is because after about 50 or 60 years, the world changes so much you hate everything and everybody in it. And I've That's, seen it over yeah. and over. And, you, and you've over. seen that among lost people. You've seen that among the walking dead, Lee. You've seen that among people who don't have Christ. That's where you've seen it, Lee. You've seen it, Lee, in the mirror, Lee. <laughs> yeah. You've seen it in the mirror. Yeah, I believe that. Turn to Christ and live while God's given you time, Lee. Turn to Christ and live. He'll forgive you, Lee. He'll forgive you for your sin. He'll remove it as far as the east is from the west. You'll be reconciled to the God you have spent your life offending, and you'll have the assurance of eternal life, not because you're good, but because he's good. Turn to Christ and live, Lee, while God's given you time. Well, the problem I beg all, of you, Lee, turn to Christ and live. The problem with all this shit is maybe I don't want to be here no more. Look, at, I can't make no friends. These kids are so messed up. You know, I can't. I love children. I, you know, I see a kid and I'm, I'm backing off 20 feet. Don't get me. Don't get that kid near me. Don't make me say, let me say hello to him. I don't want to go to jail for being a pervert. And that's just the way it is now. You can't get near children. If you walk up and want to push some kid on a swing, say hi, and talk to him, you're, you're, you're a pedophile. I, I don't want to live like that. Look, you're, you're dodging it, Lee. And my girl, my daughter. You're, it happened Lee, to me and my daughter too. You're, you're dodging it, Lee. No. You're dodging the truth, you know. I may be. And you're clinging, and you're clinging. Lead to your own idea of I'm Lee being on, God. I'm hanging on to that rope like dear life because yeah. that's and, the only rope and, I know. And one preacher said, Lee, hundreds of years ago, <laughs> you are hanging over the precipice of hell by a spider's web, Lee. I believe that. Damn thing, they're a million times stronger than Turn threat. to Christ and live, Lee, while God's given you time. He is your only hope, Lee, and there is hope in Christ. I'm not saying it. But here, you know what? Here's and the. You know what else here, I think is? What's that, Lee? I think it's real chicken shit to me to go face death and then go, oh God, please save me now. That's, I think that's I'm pride. Die. Well, well, Lee, well, that, that's, that's not biggest, what's going to happen, Lee. That's, that's the biggest load of crap in the world. That's pride, Lee. You're still just clinging to pride. You, You're just dressing it up as righteousness. That, wouldn't that upset you? Some guy no. ran into a life. He goes to no. the table. No, no, because now he wants because to that's God. exactly what Jesus did for a man who was hanging on a cross <laughs> next to him, Lee. Yeah. Both those both those men were hurling insults at him, mocking him, telling him to come down from the cross. And then one of them comes to their senses, Lee, and he says to the other criminal, he said, hey, you and I deserve what we're getting. This man's done nothing wrong. And he looks at Jesus and says, remember me when you come into, my, come into your kingdom. And Jesus looks at him and says, no, 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 you waited too long. Time's up for you. No, 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 no. This is this is this is all chicken here. You know, you can't. No, this is what this is what Jesus said. He said, "Today you will be with me in paradise, Lee." Not because that man was good, but because of the grace and mercy and love of God that died for that repentant sinner. You need to repent, Lee. You need to turn to Christ and live while God's given you time. I've done a lot of apologizing. Apology apologizing won't help you, Lee. To a lot of people that won't help you I know it's according to you no according you to God Lee feel any better but it makes me feel better no I didn't say they make me feel any better Lee but I do it for different reasons I you do it for you I do it to worship God well, look at this. you do it for you Lee you why do it to make does, life easier on you why does the reason 
I want to be nice to people matter. What difference does in, it In your worldview without God, it doesn't matter at all, Lee. It doesn't matter whether or not you're a priest or a pedophile or both, Lee, in your worldview. Do it doesn't things? matter. What if it, I do things in is so like what? people do like people do in his name? What's the difference? Because you're not doing it for his glory, you're doing it for yours. Maybe I'm doing it for the other people. So what? Of course it makes you feel good when you help other people, but it makes them feel good when you help them. Yeah, Lee, you can do things that'll make you feel good and make other people feel good, and you're still going to stand before God and be judged for your sin against him, and you're going to go to hell. You I'm need say, Christ. I'm say one Turn to Christ, thing. Lee. Turn to Christ. I, I'm listening to you, and I hear you. And I'm listening to you. And I appreciate the conversation. And I, and I very much appreciate my conversation with you. So... for my mom to come driving across looking for me at the hospital. Is she meeting you there? No. 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 But I left a message, so she knows I'm headed there. Okay. My Debbie's there, too, and she ain't got no car right now, so I let her know I'm in the hospital getting checked out. But I've got my... I don't know. You do. You do know, Lee. I don't you do know, know if I want to stay here. I'm hating everybody, man. I'm so sick of everybody. I know you're supposed to forgive. But hey, the gift of forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. Nope. Yes. Nope. That's no, not no. You're not. You're not taking that right. Okay. Explain it to me then. Okay. I'm gonna forgive that person over there for being whatever he did. Uh huh. And I don't, now that I've forgiven him, I don't have to live being mad at him anymore. Right. I don't have to live at what an sure. asshole he's been. Sure. Sure. That, forgive. sure. That, that, and, and that's, you have to, and you have to I'm come saying. into my, and you have to come into my worldview to make any sense of that. Because Lee, you can, you, you, you can be dead in your sin and forgive all you want and feel better about that and not carry it with you. And you're still going to face the wrath of God for your sin against him. See, the reason I forgive Lee is because I have been forgiven by the God who created me through faith in Jesus it's Christ. It's a different reason, you're right. I forgive people so I don't have to punish myself. Okay, because you know, what good is Right, that's called a worldly sorrow, Lee, and even that is sin in yeah, God's eyes. That's sin in God's eyes too. I, worldly sorrow is sin I in God's eyes too, in Lee. God's eyes, not my own. You need God's forgiveness, Lee, <laughs> and that will only come if you humble yourself Repent and put your trust in Christ alone for your salvation. Well, please understand. I didn't come here. I didn't come here for this side of the sign. I came here for the other side of the sign. I knew it was cross and I knew what you would talk about. But I also knew that you would give me a chance to say something. And nobody's listening fucking to me. And, uh, and I appreciate that. And that's why I come over. I said, you know what? Well, I'm glad you did. wants to talk. Good, let's have one. I'm glad you did. I am too. I am too. I'm glad to have the time with I, you. I don't take every minute. I don't, I, I'm not going to call you full of shit. Believe in what you want to believe in. Feel good about yourself. Do good for other people. I respect you as a man for that. Okay? Whatever the, whatever the, the, the psalm number is or whatever you choose to call it. It's just to me, it's just you being a good person and looking and using something for the reason. And if you can get them to act like you, you're doing something in this world. If you can get them to go over to God and be a morale, good person, you're doing something for the planet. And I appreciate you for it. You're trying. You're trying to get these idiots out here to see what they're doing wrong. And they're not. They're not listening to the people drive by and they honk. But when they go home, they're going to watch the TV that their son happily stole a week ago. You know what I'm saying? So don't give me that shit about you believing God. I see, not you, these other people. They fake it. They're lying. They're cheating. But Lee, that doesn't change what's going to happen to you <laughs> when you stand before God. But they'll face. They'll face their day just like you will but Lee but Lee what matters is what's going to happen to you Lee 
You're the man sitting in front of me right now. I'm not really, really. I'm sick of it. Let me tell you something. Let me throw a few things out. Death isn't going to be better for you, Lee. It's not going to be better. Death's not going to be better, Lee. I've done everything I wanted to do except jump out of an airplane, and I would have done that, but I'm scared of heights. <laughs> I'll go in a plane, but I ain't jumping out of it. Okay. Why would someone jump out of a perfectly good plane? Uh, beyond me. <laughs> really, beyond me. Dude. Yeah, me too. But, you know, I came here for the conversation. I wanted to say my a few things that I know I did wrong. I know I'm a goddamn prick. I know I've been an asshole my whole life. I couldn't control it. And I'm sorry to everyone that I did it to, almost everyone I did it to. There's a few had some shit coming and they got it. And other than that, I, I don't feel bad that I have this. I probably did this to myself over the stress and uh, you get so mad, you know, you, uh, I do that a lot. I gotta go tuck myself in a corner. To, I used to have to go tuck in a corner and hide and growl and scream. I was so pissed off to keep me from going out there and knocking the shit out of that mechanic just screwed up an $800 job. So, you know, I, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about anything, but I know this. I'm sick of everybody around me. Everybody's so full of shit, I can't stand it. Do you Nobody include your do you, do you include yourself in that, Lee? Yeah. Yeah, I do now. I do include myself. I'm so full of shit, my breath stinks, man. Okay? Debbie thinks I'm full of shit. My mom thinks I'm full of shit. Anybody else that knows me thinks I'm full of shit. Well, you, but you don't have a car, you don't have a bank account, you maxed out all your credit cards, you walk through life like nothing ever mattered, and now you want help from me? You want me to loan you 200? You know what I do when somebody asks me to loan a couple hundred bucks? I pull out my wallet, I give them $20 and say, here, keep it. You don't, don't even pay me back, here. Get you something, something to eat. Here, get it, get out of here. That's all you're getting. And I don't want it back. Take your 20 and get out. And I've done that many times because I've learned. If somebody comes up to you and asks you for a favor, you're going to be an asshole. You're going to be an asshole right now. When I say no, I'm going to be an asshole. Well, you're an asshole. You got the money. You're an asshole. You won't loan me $200. Or I could loan you the $200. And you promised, swore to God, you were going to give that back to me at the end of the month when you got your check, but you didn't. And now I'm looking for you, and I'm looking for you, and I'm waiting, and I call you, and you don't answer the phone. I finally catch up to you, get my money, and man, you you know, you're a fucking asshole, dude. You know, you got plenty of money. You don't need this $200 right now. You're a fucking asshole. So either way, when you help somebody or don't help somebody, you're going to be an asshole. To them, not God, to them. In God's eyes, I don't know. But I'm an asshole. Everybody's an asshole. <laughs> and it's just getting worse by the way. Are you getting mad at me? Not at all. <laughs> no, my heart goes out to you, Lee. I, I want you to receive what God so graciously gave me, and that's a new heart. I'd love to walk a through new life heart. in bliss. Oh, it's not bliss, Lee. <laughs> it's not bliss. The bliss isn't here, Lee. <laughs> hell isn't here, and bliss isn't here, well, Lee. Hell's pretty close to here. But, Lee, I have right peace. Them. I have hope, yeah. and, and and that is because I have Christ, Lee. Yeah, I got none of that, peace. But you can, Lee. If you will but humble yourself, turn to Christ and live, you can, Lee. See? They need Christ too, Lee. I know. They need something. No, they don't need something. Uh, you, they need someone. They need Christ, Lee. You know what? Because a pill's not going to fix that. I'm a not, law's not going to fix that. I'm not opposed to God or you walking over there and helping those people and when, in any way you can, whether it be words or not. Man, I just want to go over there right now and say something. I just want to go over there and say something. And 10 years ago, I'd walked over there and said, you want to fight, motherfucker? Get out of that car. I would have said, I'd have drug him out of that car. I said, you want to swing at that woman? I'm going to take you down. And I could have. I was a bad motherfucker. I did boxing in school. I did. I did. Uh, I went to boxing at a boxing school, wrestling in school. I'm a hell of a fighter. 
when I see people like screaming like that, because I just did that to Debbie not too goddamn long ago. What an idiot I have been. Screaming at the only person who makes my fucking eggs in the morning. Make sure I take my blood pressure medicine. Make sure I get, goes to the store for me and I've been an asshole. Repent, turn to Christ and live, Lee. The answer is the same to everything you offer. Thank you. God bless you, Lee. God bless I'm you. I'm going to be praying for you. Thank you. Both for your health and your soul. I'm going to be praying it. for you. You have a good day. You too, Lee. You, you read too. them laws, because I'm coming back. Ten laws of the universe. I will look them up. I want you to tell me that those aren't God's laws. All right? That those aren't indicative of whatever you want to say. Thank you. All right, take I'm care. I'm going to hospital. All right. Well, I hope you appreciated that conversation with Lee. And I'm very grateful for how the conversation ended with a hug between two men there on the corner of Harrison and Locust. Uh, Lee did not repent and believe. His heart was still hard. But I think during that conversation, the Lord was certainly at work. Now, remember, the Word of God makes it clear that for those who are being saved... The Word of God, the Gospel, is going to be an aroma of life unto life. But to those who are perishing, to those who will die in their sin, to those who will spend eternity in hell, the Word of the Cross is not only foolishness, but it is also an aroma of death unto death. My hope for Lee is that the Word of God, which is sharper than any two-edged sword, and the gospel, which is the power of God for salvation, will pierce that man's heart. And that God will indeed cause him to be born again to a living hope. So I'd be interested to hear from you in the comment section below what you thought about this conversation with Lee. Uh, what challenged you about it? What encouraged you about it? What, if anything, further equipped you? in the way that I interacted with Lee. Uh, it was a hard conversation. And I really felt as though I was fighting for this man's soul. I hope you could see in the conversation as hard-hearted as Lee was, that he knows that God exists, no matter what he did to deny it, no matter how adamant he was, no matter how hard-hearted he was, no matter how defiant he was, Lee knows that God exists. Lee knows that he's suppressing the truth by his unrighteousness. And I even pointed out to Lee at one point, Lee, you're scared. You're scared of dying. That's why you stopped to talk. You're on your way to the hospital and you don't think you're going to make it out. You're scared because you know you're going to stand before the God you've sinned against all your life. I held nothing back with Lee. Uh, the conversation was pointed at times. Uh, I was never angry with him. In fact, Lee asked me at one point, are you mad at me? And I assured him that I wasn't. Uh, that my heart went out to him. That I cared for him. Uh, I was never once mad at Lee. Uh, but I wasn't going to sidestep any of the issues. I wasn't going to sugarcoat anything for him because Lee could very well be going to the hospital to die. And so I was fighting for the soul of that man who is possibly dying. As you heard that conversation with Lee, did you think about anybody you know? I did. Someone that I've proclaimed the gospel to in the past. But Lee reminded me of someone that I know very well. Did Lee remind you of anybody? And does the thought of sharing the gospel with that person in your life bring you some fear or trepidation or anxiety uh, because the person you want to share the gospel with is every bit as hard-hearted as Lee is, well, I want to encourage you to love that person more than you 
love yourself, uh, to uh, fight for the soul of that friend or that family family member uh, that might make you uncomfortable talking to. Uh, lives are at stake. Souls are at stake. Now, granted, you're not going to save anybody, and you're not going to keep God from saving anybody by your disobedience. But I would hope that if there is someone like Lee in your life, that you would take the time to communicate the gospel to that person, count the cost, whatever it might be, including the relationship with that person, count the cost, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow Christ, and communicate the gospel to that hard-hearted person that comes to mind. Be obedient. Be faithful. Be loving three most important aspects of any evangelistic encounter. Obedience, faithfulness, and love. Not the results, not quote-unquote effectiveness, but whether or not you are being obedient, faithful, and loving to God, and loving to the person in front of you. If those three things are in place, you can never fail in your evangelistic efforts. Again, the only time we fail in evangelism, presuming that we're doing it biblically, the only time we fail in evangelism is when we fail to evangelize. So if there is someone like Lee in your life, please make it a point, even today, to communicate the gospel to him or her. All right. Thank you for joining me for this edition of the Stop and Talk podcast. Until next time, dear friends, God bless.